back to our daily Bible study today. We are going to be in the book of Acts. We are going to be in Acts, the 16th chapter, and we're going to be looking at verses 6 through 34. So if you're reading at home, read Acts 16, verses 6 through 34. Now, I do want to make mention before we begin talking about the passage here that I do apologize for there not having been uh, any videos last week. I had a lot of requests for the video that I did on Islam to ensure that it got up every day. Um, it took me a little bit of time to get each one of those rendered, so I wasn't able to put together a daily Bible study, but I'll try to make sure I do get those out this week. And next week, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be at camp uh, preaching and teaching at our youth camp, but what I'm going to be doing is each night I'm going to be trying to put the videos from camp on, let you guys know what's going on there. We also have a special speaker, Dr. Steve Herford, is going to be at camp speaking. I'm going to try to have some of his message on the internet as well through our YouTube page. So you'll still have videos to look at, it just won't necessarily be a daily Bible study. So this week I'm going to try and get one out each day on the various passages that we're looking at. And again, today we're in Acts 16, verses 6 through 34. And, and this passage, this is um, just so meaty. There's so much stuff here that we could talk about. I'm going to have to really try to narrow it down and just get to the points that I want to focus on. The first thing I want you to focus on is the very first verse. It says, And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Now, I got a question in Sunday school about that, and I wanted to bring it up here on our daily Bible study. They said, why were they forbidden to preach in Asia? Well, the first thing we need to realize, this is not Asia as we think of Asia today. This is referring to Asia Minor, and this is the area that's commonly, it's now known as Turkey. So this is not Asia as in China, Japan, and places like that. This is Asia Minor. It's a place there in the Middle East. And um, the reason for this forbidding of the of, uh, to speak the word in Asia, this was not an absolute uh, pro prohibition. This was at this specific time they were being prohibited from speaking because the Holy Spirit was leading them somewhere else. The Holy Spirit doesn't just close a door in one area and close a door in all areas. If he closes a door in one place, he's opening up a door in another place for us to go in a different direction. And as far as Paul was concerned, Paul was being sent somewhere else. In fact, we see as we move on the call, the, what's called the Macedonian call. It was the, when, when Paul had the vision in the night of a man of Macedonia who was standing there urging him to come, saying, come to Macedonia and help us. So he was being called to, to missionary, to, to witness in another area. So it wasn't that God was holding back Asia Minor from hearing the gospel forever. It was just at that particular point, Paul was being called to witness somewhere else. So that's the first thing I want you to notice. The second thing I want you to notice is the conversion of Lydia. Under the conversion of Lydia, as you're reading through the passage, that's verses 11 through 15, you'll notice in verse 14 it says, One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the ta city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. Now, the reason I wanted to focus on that verse uh, when talking about her conversion is it makes a very important point about something that is necessary in salvation. In salvation, it is necessary that God first open our hearts to hear the gospel. You see, in our natural mind and in our natural spirit, we are dead to the things of God. The Bible says we are dead in trespasses and sins. We have no natural desire for the things of God. We have no natural impulse to want to follow God. In fact, all of our natural impulses do the opposite. They all are in rebellion against God. And here is Lydia who is, her heart is opened by God so that she can hear and believe the words of the Apostle Paul. So we see that. Now, the next thing that we see in the story is Paul and Silas are sent to prison. They're sent to a jail. But why? The reason why is because there was a young girl who was being oppressed by a spirit, and she was being used by some people in the town to make money. And it doesn't say necessarily how. Uh, we read through the text. It says that there was a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. Doesn't tell us exactly what type of fortune she was doing, though. Uh, we, we 
would understand that only God knows the future. Even the devil and, and, and demons don't necessarily know the future. But they can bring about a certain amount of trickery, just like a lot of fortune tellers do today, can bring about a lot of trickery and make people think that they are telling the future, make people think that they are seeing beyond uh, the now. And this is how she was making money for them. She was a diviner. She was a sorceress, if you will. And here, she the reason she's able to do this and it was doing is because she was oppressed and possessed, rather, by a spirit. And Paul um, was annoyed by her because she was uh, coming up and, and she was crying out, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. You may say, Well, why is she being annoyed by that? Well, she wasn't saying it. Apparently, she wasn't saying it in a good way, but she was saying it in an ugly and an and, and, and attacking way. And Paul was annoyed by this. And he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. He commands the spirit out of the woman. And it came out of her that very hour. But again, her owners were not happy with that because they were making money from her. They were being financially... Uh, they were receiving a financial gain from her illness, from her possession by the by a demon spirit. So they're angry at Paul and Silas now. So they drum up a crowd against him. They they bring charges against him, and they end up getting them thrown into prison. You read the story there, and this is one of the most powerful passages in all the Bible. That comes starting in verse twenty five and down to verse thirty four and beyond. It says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You and your household and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house and he took them that same hour of the night and washed their wounds and he was baptized at once he and his family this is the thought I wanted to leave you with today at the end of our Bible study as you're looking at this passage here are two men who have been beaten and put into prison for their faith yet while in prison they were able to sing praises to God. They were able to sing out to Him. And in that singing, you, had to, you have to imagine that jailer sitting there, listening to them sing, listening to them sing, wondering, who are these people? Who are these strange people who would sing in prison, yet when, in, when a, a seemingly catastrophic, catastrophic problem came into the, his life, he thought that he had lost his prisoners, which means he was going to be dead because if, if, if a jailer was to lose the prisoners, it was his head that was going to be lost for. He was thinking he was going to die. And in that catastrophe, he sees their goodness. And immediately he remembers they were singing in their tribulation. And he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? We should try to live our lives so that people who are rejecting of Christ, when they come to that place of catastrophe in their lives, they see us and they say, what must I do to be saved? That's our call. That's our mandate to live a life that magnifies Christ even in our trials and tribulations. I hope that today's Bible study has been a blessing for you. If you get an opportunity, please leave comments. Please uh, write down in the box below, or you can rate the video right there just by clicking the, uh, the Rate It uh, button. And also, if you have any questions, send them to me at mkfoskey at yahoo.com. M-K-F-O-S-K-E-Y at yahoo.com. Now, one last thing I want to mention. 
that this week I've gotten a couple of questions, email questions. One is on regeneration and another is on end times prophecy. So uh, part of the Bible study time this week, I'm going to be making some extra videos to answer those questions. And if you have a question, email it to me and I'll make a video for you as well, provided the question gives enough uh, meat to, to be able to do that. God bless you and have a wonderful day.